everyone. I just decided to hop on. I've got some bonus time. Kind of weird. Um, I wish I could let you guys see the scenery because the Fall Foy Lodge is so beautiful. Okay, I wanted to talk about a couple of things, and I know that I'm all about exposing LBL, but I also can't ignore the biggest news story ever, right? I want to say a couple of things. So forgive me for going out on a limb. I just think there's a lot of like-minded people. I feel that there's going to be so much for us to learn about what happened with Gabby and Brian from that unfortunate account encounter where they should have been, one of them should have been arrested. Quite frankly, that would have made Gabby call her parents and say, hey, look, this is what's going down and this is that serious. And most all states, and according to all of the sergeants that responded to that, they all said, one person needs to be arrested here, okay? I don't understand how they got it so bad backwards that there were two call-ins, okay? Now, listening to both witnesses, the one, he was like kind of younger and he's like, oh, I don't know. I mean, they were kind of slapping at each other, kind of like cartoon-like figures, you know? I really couldn't decide if it was like real or not. Yeah, that's because you don't normally see grown-ups hitting each other. So what he saw, he couldn't really comprehend. He pretty much said it was mutual, but leaned more on, you know, the fact that Brian had locked her out of the vehicle. Okay. Now, the second witness, there was no question. He said he saw a male full on hitting the female in the face. Now, as some of the other um, videos have came out, because you can tell that they're scrubbing this because you know that you know that the Moab police are just going to be eaten alive for this. This is going to be the stuff of conversations for decades on what, what went wrong in that case. But um, the, the footage that they didn't want us to see, you know, when they released the hour footage, they thought that was enough, I'm sure. But they did get the other point of view where she actually, she has a mark on her face. And when she put her hands up to her face, you could see that the way that she said he grabbed her face, you see it's no stretch that he would have then, in anger, put his hand, his weight on his palm and in a fit of rage, killed her in a snap. She, you can think that you're a tough girl. You can think that you can swat the heck out of somebody, you know, they're cornering you. Any animal cornered will fight back. That's the problem with, uh, in the 80s, we watched our mothers get beaten, okay? We watched the cops come by and do nothing. We watched our moms become victims. We watched the dads get child support that didn't ever pay, and we watched our moms become welfare queens, okay? That was the 80s. Well, then the 90s and the 2000s come along and it's like, okay, you know what? It's equal, right? It's equal. And you know what? If you hit me, I'm going to hit you back. Well, that led to then somebody needs to be arrested. Whoever is the more aggressive party, whether they started it or not, because I can tell you that I've been in that situation. And when I was cornered, I came out like a hellcat and my ex had a lot more marks on him than I did me, but I was more seriously injured. Um, does it look like I'm the aggressor? Absolutely. Was I cornered? Yeah. Did I take a towel bar out of the freaking wall? And yeah, I did. Okay. But that's what, that's what I know happens is that when you're cornered, even if the odds are against you, you're going to fight your way out. And that's what I feel Gabby did in her frustration in so doing, the whole thing got mixed up and it look, made her look like the aggressor. And she tried to take the blame too because she didn't want to point at him and say, he did this. Of course, hindsight is twenty twenty, And I can't say everything, but I can tell you that when I was in that position with a former relationship, one of us got arrested. And I'm going to tell you that the one of them was me. Okay. And I'm five foot nothing. And 
my ex was twice the size of me. If it looked like I was the aggressor, okay, fine. You meet the greatest people in jail, let me tell ya. Um, I felt like I was put in there because I met this troubled girl and, you know, I'm a law school dropout, I'm a nursing school dropout, I've got a couple of bachelor's degrees, so it's like I felt like I spent the night, you know, really counseling this girl and got her some good resources, so, you know, everything happens for a reason, it was no skin off my, I mean, whatever, okay, you just move on, but I'm telling you that on the West Coast, the law is one of you goes, one of you gets arrested, now they separated, supposedly, and they can't prove that Brian actually was separated, they can't show that he showed up at that motel and she got him blah, blah, blah. And until the family comes forth with what happened in those days when Brian had flown back, because they can prove that she was still alive then. So there was a week or so where he was gone. She stayed in a motel and he was back in Florida. So, you know, people can say she should have gotten away. Well, the average, average, um, domestic abuse relationship, the, it takes seven times before you go on average. So that means sometimes it takes 20, sometimes it takes one, but your average is like seven times. I will tell you once somebody put their hands on my neck, that was the last time I've ever been around that person, you know, where my, I never turned around. I never, um, turned my back, you know, we shared kids. So we still had to see each other, but you know, it's like, once you put your hand on my neck, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to trust you because it's just, I can't. So I feel that he had came close to her neck in the way that he grabbed her face, the way that she, the way that she contorted her hands to show what he did was very unusual. If somebody just, you know, hit you, 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 you repeat that motion. She didn't. She did this weird kind of cross motion of where he grabbed her. And like I say, you can just see that that's how it went down. So, okay. So then he went and did the right thing and he went and, you know, killed himself because his punk ass would not have done well in prison. He would have been sitting there lipping off about all that they're wasting. And, and, you know, just like he wasn't letting Gabby have water because he didn't believe in the plastic water bottles. And then, you know, you see her in the back of that vehicle chugging down to in the plastic bottles, you know, it's like she was freaking thirsty. But, oh, no, he wants to sit there and eat his Fruit Loops out of a cantaloupe bowl. Cantaloupe. Because he's not wasting a bowl. It's like, you know, it would have just been like all freaking day. Him just nagging on things. Him, I'm going to say a term that's outdated. The term is Asperger's. I believe that he has that kind of autism. And it can be very frustrating. My half-brother um, suffers from that. And he, you know this was back in the eighties when he had his diagnosis and nobody really understood it, but, um, he'd get on one of those tangents and he'd get very angry and you just can't stop it. I mean, I, you just can't. And I just really see that in Brian. And I see that it was probably not treated because he was probably so intelligent in so many other areas that he was able to talk his way out. But I think his parents were just absolutely out of their league with him. I think that they'd try and tell him something and he'd argue it out and same with Gabby. she tried try and tell him something and it was his way. And if you didn't like it, he was going to sit there and just go and go and go and go and go and go and go. So I think that the parents are a little bit low in affect. Um, when he went to that, because now we know they were not getting him out of the country. They weren't funneling him to Peru. They weren't doing anything. And so for all those protesters standing outside there for a freaking month, screaming at him, like, he had killed himself in those first few days. Okay. So that means that all those people for that month, are just screaming and their, their child, their man child was dead. And all of the talk shows and I've watched them. I've watched them because this is on my mind, you know, as I watched domestic violence in my childhood, as I experienced it in my adulthood. Um, this topic is, you know, tough for me. And I just see Gabby and like everybody's saying, she's America's daughter. Well, she is, but I, I know, and I advocate for others who have been in her position and in, in the, in, in the way that she lost her life. And 
the cops play this game of suicide, murder, huh, who can tell, unless, unless the body gets up and tells us, and they, they treat it like that, the body, eh, especially if you're, if, if you're indigenous, um, or not as photogenic as Gabby, and it's really sad, and we've got to do something, and I mean, our law enforcement has egg on his face right now, because when they got the call to, when the parents got the call to pick up Brian's car, they said, hey, they reported it to law enforcement. They reported it to their lawyer. They said, look, his car is here. We know that this is the trail that he goes to. This is his thinking spot. This is where he, he must have went. Well, they looked, apparently, and then they left, but they left it all closed. They didn't continue to to just search that area. They kept that area closed and then they searched the rest of the United States and world as we know it. Everybody got involved and I mean the the low estimate was that it's costing tax, taxpayers $220,000 a day to have looked for Brian Laundry. Well, it's a lot more than that. Come on. And here he was he went and he killed himself. Now, I think those parents should have been a little bit more reactive because then they were probably looking at the reality that their son just probably killed himself. Why weren't they going, look, find him. We know he goes here. Okay. Where did you go? This is where he went. You know, why were they not like being more vocal to the cops and whatever saying, look, I realize you won't let me go in there because you don't want me to see this. But if you're going to go in there, I need to know that you did this. I need to know that you saw this. I need to know that you went here. And then supposedly if his remains were found in an area that was previously underwater. Well, how did he get underwater six weeks ago? How was this area underwater six weeks ago and now it's dried out? Okay. And we're talking remains. So I'm going to tell you the one theory that I do believe, I honestly do, and I'm sorry this is gruesome. I believe that he, in his final act of F you to the world, I believe he climbed a tree and I believe that he hung himself from a tree very high. That gives us the body that would have fallen down and that gives us his bald head up in the tree um, so they could have compared uh, dental records because if this area was supposedly underwater that they found him, how could they have gotten the dental records that fast? And if it was underwater and they're saying that, you know, animals of prey and whatnot took it, I mean, you know, dogs, alligators, and they're not, they're going to chew up those teeth. I mean, that's one way that I can see that. And I'm sorry for being disrespectful and saying that about his head. I just really just, I, I, I'm not pleased with the laundry. Okay. The smelly mildewy laundry. So, I mean, that's my theory. And do you think that he had something to do with the, the women who were at the Moonflower Cafe. I mean, the timing is right. I don't see him as that violent. I don't see him as that plotting. I think that he just got in one of his little tisms and threw a fit and was throwing a freaking tantrum about something. And he grabbed Gabby and choked and throttled her, as they are saying. She was death by strangulation and throttling. Um, I think that we can all learn something from, from what happened. Now there's this parody of it, not parody. I mean, not to be funny or anything. That's not a parody, but there's this skit out that I saw and they have, um, this girl and she reenacts basically exactly it, but she says it's her skincare line. All these people who are watching it don't have any idea what it is. They're like, oh, wow, this poor girl, she got saved. If, if only the cops would have done this and Gabby. Okay, they're reenacting this. Now, I don't know how I feel about the reenactment, but they put on the end of it, they put the new foundation that Gabby's parents have started in honor of Gabby. Um... They put 
their contact information. So then people are saying, oh, they made this video. The parents made this video. No, they didn't. This person who has a web channel did this. Like I say, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they said they're trying to show this symbol, this international symbol um, for domestic violence where you tuck your thumb in and you um, put your fingers over it. So if you're in a domestic violence situation, that's what you're supposed to do. And then you don't have to say anything. And they know that you're saying, yes, the situation is out of control. I need help. I, I've not heard of it before. Um, I think it's interesting. So, I mean, that's kind of where my mind is on that. And now, back to the regular, back to our regular and scheduled channel. Thank you for letting me uh, spout off about that. I saw the freaking clickbait. Oh, that Friday, Friday ran away. Okay. And so I watched a stupid video where she's asking if she's going to get shocked by the coffee. And like, I'm like, okay, you mean there's going to be too much caffeine and it's going to not let you sleep for three days like the nitro does? No, she's talking about like if you get static. And so the she asked the girl and the girl was like, um, I don't think so. Well, then of course, you know, would have to happen to LBL. She touches it and she's like, ow, ow, that hurt. Ow, I don't like that when that happens. Ow. Well, what the F? Did the freaking coffee attack you? And of course, she was. She wanted a hot coffee because she was trying to order like a bigger and a, a smaller and a bigger cup to get more because it's always about her getting more, more than she is actually being charged. She always wants something more for her, and so then she was like, "Oh, it's fine. I'll just take this." But shouldn't you be putting it in a different cup? And shouldn't you? Okay, well, can you put this? Can you put some oat milk in it? You know. Oh yeah, because you're such a freaking vegan that then you sit there and you run your mouth that you have to go and take back your. $200 coach purse because it's white. Well, what? Did you pick the wrong color? You were there when you bought it. You're the one who picked the freaking white purse. So anyway, um, then she's like, well, my lifestyle just doesn't, uh, doesn't allow that I can have this $200 purse. Okay, well, you idiot. You just said that you're going to go into Target and, and buy all new makeup from Physicians Formula and you're just going to drop a hundred bucks. How much do you spend a week on makeup and you still look like a freaking dishcloth? I mean, just stop. Stop it. So then she's like, you can get a perfectly good leather bag then from Marshalls for just $80. Look at it. It's got pockets and I think I'm going to make something in it. And just shut up. Okay, it's leather. Okay, I thought, you're, I thought you were a vegan or was that just when you were trying to court Shawnee? So anyway, um, you just watch this big, this big leather tote that she just got. She's going to take back. She says, well, she wants to wear a, a purse for two days, get it all smelly, have Friday slobber all over it, drag it across the poop shit floor, and then take it back with all the dog hair and slobber and once again cost the taxpayers. Like, just corral her so she can't buy and return every freaking day and all the makeup that she's bought then from all of the department stores makes me wonder if all of the department stores now have her pegged like like um because like i said the girls in that uh club are pretty exclusive and they know who's gonna you know jack their time around that's why every time she gets to a new city she goes right to the expensive department stores goes and gets the chanel makeup gets all this because she's getting all of the attention and getting all the samples and then buys one or two things and then takes it back and then buys one or two things takes it back and then this person gets all their commission taken away and they see her and they're like yeah i'm gonna go take my freaking lunch or here you see the new girl here why don't you go help that woman over there yeah why don't you go put on some makeup on her for a while? Why don't you go do that? Huh? Dumbass. Uh, that's what they'll do to a new girl. Just watch. Because I was that new girl. Uh-huh. I got thrown those ones. But then it's like we got to the point where we would even text around. We were like, hey, hey, watch out. You know who? You know who's coming. Oh, great. You know, because it's like when you're on commission, you have to hustle because you get yelled at if you don't sell this much per hour. And like I say, returns are taken out of that. So I think that she's got her number pegged at the department store so the girls aren't giving her their attention. So until they get a new employee that she can go and get his new narcissistic supply, she's hosed. So now she's just sitting there thinking that she's going to be the, uh, the freaking drugstore makeup guru. Get this, not that. Oh, get Milani and not Physician's Formula. 
They're the same price. They're sold at the same store. Same concept. Physician's formula is made by dermatologists from dermatologists for dermatologists because of sensitive skin. And that's what she's saying not to buy one week. And now she's saying she's going to go buy the whole line. She's going to buy the whole line so she can sit there and tear it apart and then get go and take it all back. It's like, it's just lunacy. So anyway, I wanted to say that she tells on herself She'll say something as a joke to test it out, or she'll say something outrageous just to kind of get the shock value off. So her clickbait was that um, she was going to, um, her clickbait was that she was going to, yeah, oh, here's a jackass woman who leaves her dog in the car as I'm speaking. You hear that poor dog barking? Idiot. Idiot woman. Come back for your dog. So, anyway, this could be a Friday situation. Oh, she's going to go shop. Idiot. Anyway. Um, now, you could hear her dog barking all the way. She goes in the freaking store. Idiot. Come back. I'm sorry, dog. There's nothing I can do for you. I'm sorry. So, anyway. Um, anyway idiots. I can't think. I want to see somebody just being so stupid. I just can't think. What do you guys think about people leaving animals in the car? So stupid. But anyway, she shouldn't be taking that freaking Friday anywhere because what she, okay, so this is what I'm getting to is that she put the clickbait out there that Friday ran away. You watch. Give it what do you think? By Christmas? It's going to be that. Friday ran away. I just took him out for a walk and he ran and I couldn't get him with my fat waddling ass. I started chasing after him and a small fire started between my thighs. True story. Chafing is real. She's been in trouble for starting several small fires with a freaking flabby... Can you imagine the grease fire? So, yeah. Because he's going to jump out the top at a stop or something. Because she was like, oh, she was being all freaking creepy in her car, um... When she was talking, she's like, oh, there was a terrible car accident over there. Oh, yeah, there's always these terrible car accidents wherever she goes, right? And she's like, it was a terrible car accident. And and I don't care about the people, but a dog got its face slashed. One more reason not to take your freaking dog out with you. Because, you know, it's like they don't fare well in accidents. I mean, I, 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 I she has her top down. She's trying to take it into places. And then she's like, oh, I can't take him into places. Too many people come up and they want to see him. You shouldn't be taking him out. But, of course, she's going to pull the, oh, he's my emotional support animal crap. So that she uh, she can't get, you know, him. Uh, anyway, watch. He's going to run. And it's not going to be like, uh, she's going to drive out in the desert and, he's, and let him run. And she's going to take off and Herbie the love bug. And then she's going to go get herself a tiny dog to replace him. Just watch. It's going to happen as sure as the day is long. Because when she started talking about um, how she wanted a puppy for her birthday, we all knew that Bella was going to be put down because she was abusing the crap out of Bella. And she hates Pom-Pom. What about Pom-Pom now? How she used Pom-Pom against Bella? Well, now she doesn't even like Pom-Pom. She gonna take them both out the desert? Because remember how many times she would talk about that before she actually put Bella down? She would say that, uh, oh yeah, Goongor says we should stop in the desert and drop Bella off. Well, Goongor didn't say that. Maybe he said that about her, but you know. So yeah, just watch. Friday is going to go run off. And it's going to be sad because he'll run out in front of a car. He won't live long. I, and I mean, if if a rescue can get to him like people on here who have a clue have said he's a behavior case so it's like it's going to be really hard for somebody to get him in a good home and do the basics because he's not potty trained he's not it's just he's Lori Best with her special touch oh yes and did you see what she was talking about? What she was going to do with that handbag? She's like, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something with it. I'm going to put some... Because, you know, she thinks she, she makes these designer handbags. Once she's touched them, then, you know, it's like Betsy Johnson herself is, you know, grace them. Well, she 
is talking about her art and when it happens it just comes over to her she can't control it she has no idea where it comes from it just happens it's just it's just this this force that comes over like shut up it does not freaking weirdo it's just you take your xanax and ambien and then maybe you know i don't know i do you, have you guys seen what she did to that lampshade where it looks like somebody was bludgeoned on it i mean it's bad and I saw when she did that, because she was back on Facebook when she did that, and she had her minions doing that to their lampshades, too. She's got it in the back. And for as much buying and selling as she does, I cannot believe that she hasn't gotten a new bed set. Because you know she hasn't washed that bed set yet that her mother got her how many years ago. Oh, but with her laundry, she does not separate darks from whites. She's back to wearing those black shorts that show her nasty cottage cheese thighs and the frickin' black t-shirt with all of the animals and flakes of animals that have went before. And just imagine her wa washing whites with that. Like, you know, and it's like, where would she learn that? Because you know Carol didn't, but you know Carol did her frickin' laundry. That's probably one of the things that she can't do by herself. Because when she was saying that Carol couldn't leave her, she said it's because she can't do everything by herself. She can almost do everything by herself. She's almost a big girl. She's almost a big grown up girl, but this must be one of the things. She couldn't grocery shop. And she can't do her own laundry because she's not going to sort whites and darks. Like, come on. So anyway, mark my words. Friday is going to go running. And it's going to be a setup. She's going to go drive into the desert. Just watch. And then she's going to be like, go away. And then she's going to like have all this, like have all these posters and everything. Like, oh, fine Friday. And all of her minions are going to be like, oh, my heart goes out to you, LBL. Oh. And then she'll go and get another freaking breeder special, backyard breeder special. And it'll, the cycle will begin again. It's only a matter of time. Just watch. So, anyway, as always, thank you for listening. Thank you so much for your kind words. Um, it is the um, LBL army um, that gets my uh, gets your comments uh, reported before uh, they're posted. I can see them, but the, they don't get posted because they're reported because we've got our we've got the trolls listening. So, hi trolls, hi LBL. Um, we're watching you. So anyway, thank you so much for the nice words. Um, and I shall be talking at y'all soon. Thank you so much and have a great weekend.